What up, what up, what up? It's your favorite shit talking squirrel here for another Daryl Brooks video. Today, we're going to take a look at the lies of Daryl Brooks. There are a lot. I started a list. Uh, if we went through all of them, we'd be here all day, but we'll go through my favorites. I'm going to be stopping at certain points just to offer commentary or provide context. So, uh, without further ado, let's just jump on into it, shall we? Let's get this. So I'm not but arguing I'm, with you, sir. I, know, one I just bit. want you to know that I'm not arguing with you either, but I was right in the middle of finishing what I was saying. So I need to stop you for a minute, Mr. Brooks, I, because... I don't consent to that, Your Honor, because... You don't have to consent, I, I but here we go. Let me or let me. to being cut off. Oh, oh, he doesn't consent to being cut off. Isn't that rich? <laughs> like anybody ever consents to being interrupted? Does he think the judge is consenting to his multiple interruptions? <laughs> I wonder what would happen if she, like, threw it back at him. Like, Daryl says he doesn't consent to being interrupted, and then the judge says she doesn't consent to being interrupted. <laughs> In his head, he thinks, like, the trial would just end. It would just stop. It's a, it's a non-consensual paradox. <laughs> Space and time would stop. Dimensions would bend. <laughs> the universe as we know it would cease to exist. Right when I'm trying to All right, to I'm just going to talk over him for a minute. I do not have any other information regarding uh, uh, the COVID-19 protocol, meaning anything specific about you, Mr. Brooks, other than what was put in the inmate communication, which reads, due to just learning I'm on COVID-19 protocol, I respectfully ask for all proceedings to be adjourned at this time, which is why I asked you if there was any other information you wanted to provide me as I consider your request because the jail has not provided me with any specific information regarding the reason you were placed on protocol, whether you were exposed, whether you are showing symptoms. They cannot provide me with that information absent you giving them permission by signing an applicable authorization to do that. Without that, I have to rely upon you to provide that information that, to me, is, if you so choose. That is it will be a cold day in hell when he provides the court with any type of information that's going to help the trial move smoother, let alone sign away any of his rights. <laughs> God, no. Never going to happen. It's incorrect because just yesterday... <coughs> You were trying to obtain the witness list that was in my cell. You had no problem whatsoever having the the JA come down here to have me verify that they can go in my cell and search for that. So I, I find it very hard to believe that you can't consult with jail staff for them to tell you what is going on in my situation. He has to know they can't give her anything without his without him signing a, a form. I mean, it's HIPAA law. He knows that. He's fucking playing his little game here, as usual. Where they know that I've just been seen by a nurse that placed me on this protocol for having uh, a loss of taste, fatigue, and I have to wait for the results of my test. And until then, I am on a protocol which restricts me to my cell. That is very easy information to obtain. And I find it very hard that your honor cannot obtain that information, but can obtain a way to communicate with jail staff when there's a witness list involved. We're talking about someone's health that can affect not just you, but anybody else, not just officers, but also inmates. We're talking about health and we're talking about safety that has a lot of merit, and, and frankly, Your Honor, I'm afraid. Man, that is just so thoughtful and considerate of him to show such concern for the health and safety of, of those around him. I mean, he he's afraid. He's afraid of what might happen to those around him if he was to be sick. I mean, he wasn't concerned in the slightest when he ran his Ford Escape through a parade full of people. But now, now, now that he's motioning to have his trial delayed, He's very concerned about everyone's health and safety. He's afraid for us all. Thank you, Daryl. 
I'm fully vaccinated and I've, I've never had COVID. I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at here. I don't, I'm, I'm, that was the last thing I was hoping I would be told today, Your Honor. Oh, the lie detector test determined. That's a lie. That was a lie. So I'm, I'm afraid right now. I'm not feeling well. I don't know what's going on with myself. That's the reason why I put in the sick call slip initially. I had been telling officers for days that I hadn't been feeling well, but I didn't know what it was. But I felt that I had to put in the sick call slip because I was not able to taste anything. That is the reason why I was seen by nurses. That is the reason why the COVID test was administered. And that's why I'm on the protocol as we speak. Are you willing to discuss with me what tests were done? Again, I, I cannot obtain that information I don't, I'm on not my a, own. I'm not a nurse, Your Honor. I don't know the name of the test. I don't, like I said, I don't, I've never had this let happen. Let me clarify that. That was a bad, that was a pretty ambiguous question. So, um, you reported symptoms as, as that's what you're telling me, right? Correct. And you're saying some tests were done? I mean, that it's obvious. I mean, why can't it be verified with, with the nurse? I have to verify it with you. The nurse will not provide me with this information. But the jail can because they control the movement. What? They control um, all inmate movement. I can't just go from my cell to an HSU. What the fuck does movement inmate have to do movement with is not the issue at the it's, moment. It's not, but it, I'm saying, how can I tell you, how can I answer what you're asking me? If I don't want to. It, it, it doesn't make sense. You have finally actually stumbled onto a point. None of what you are saying makes any sense right now. We all understand that the jail itself controls the movement of the inmates. That's that's common sense, Your Honor. I'm not here to talk about inmate movement just, at the moment. What I'm asking you is, were you, do you believe you were tested for COVID? I obviously was tested for COVID. I, I would not be on the protocol if I was not. Do you know the what nurses, type of test? Was it an, an oral swab, a nasal swab? It was a nasal swab. All right. Do you know when the results of that test will be back? Uh, from my understanding, Friday. <laughs> he wants a stay of proceedings until Friday because he took a COVID test. <laughs> he heard the nurse say Friday and his eyes just lit up. Bing, 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 jackpot. I'm going to have to come back. I could push this off till Friday now. Sweet. That's what I was told by the doctors. I would have to be at least on this protocol until the results come back, which were you, he said the earliest would be Friday. Were you offered a rapid test? They said they do not do the rapid test. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. But you ain't saying um, were you, so you weren't offered a rapid test? They said they don't do them. Um, if one can be obtained, are you willing to submit to a rapid test? I'm, I'm not willing to submit to anything right now. And Shocking. Till we take care of the issues that that's at hand. I mean, I've already been placed on the protocol. I'm, frankly, I'm a, very afraid right now. Oh well, th that's not good. I mean, Daryl is very afraid right now. I mean, they have to take this seriously. Daryl is 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 afraid for he could he could be really sick. His his life is on the line right now. Because I I don't know what's going on. I've this is new to me. Like I said, I'm fully vaccinated, Your Honor. I've been fully vaccinated since 2021. And so for this to just be sprung on me now to say this could possibly be a COVID thing, I, I've had people close to me that have passed away from COVID. I'm afraid as hell, Your Honor. That's the reason why I submitted the ICF for the adjournment. I was thinking at least until I can get the results at, at bare minimum. I don't think I'm asking something that's Sir, impossible for you. If your I can make arrangements to have a rapid test brought to you and administered, are you willing to submit to that test? Not at this time. Why not? Oh, Judge. Sweet, sweet Judge. This was never actually about COVID. Oh, bless your heart. Not at this time. Why not? Why can't I get the results of the test I already took? But you're telling me you're scared? 
You're yes, fearful. Yes, I am. I but am you don't want to take a test that might I kill took, you today. I took the test that that he, he gave me. If, and if you're telling felt, me that test result won't be available to you until at least Friday. At least Friday. That's what I was so told. Tomorrow. I was told that I would be so placed on after. this protocol until the results came back. The earliest that the results would be back would be Friday. So that sounds like, to me, I think that's what they call a PCR test. I, I have no idea, Your Honor. Okay. I have no idea what it's called. Like Let I me said, ask I've you never had COVID. I don't know the test names i don't know what they call them I... i'm generally familiar with some of the testing for covid there are tests that can be what we call rapid tests or what are called rapid tests that are available um, and then there's uh, these other tests which take a few days um, it's again i'm not a scientist but i think the general uh, belief would be sometimes the rapid tests are accurate sometimes they're not um, sometimes people test negative when they're really positive. It just kind of depends on the circumstances. But it's my understanding a positive test would be pretty accurate. And then there's other tests that take a few days for the results to come back. It really depends on the, the lab that's being utilized, um, et cetera. Um, I am I'm asking you once again, if a rapid test can be obtained, are you willing to take a rapid test? How would that be obtained? How would it be obtained? I, I was told with... I can only go by what was told to me because when I was brought in there and they told me that they had to test me for COVID, I was immediately like, what, what, what do you mean you have to even test me for this? What, what is this about? <laughs> His story's already falling apart. <laughs> you reported you had symptoms. Now you don't know why they'd be testing you for COVID? You're a fucking liar. Well, didn't you report lieutenant. symptoms had... to them? Excuse me, Your Honor. Excuse me, Your Honor. Your logic is getting in the way of my bullshit, so I'm just going to talk over you. I had a lieutenant and two officers present when I was asking all these questions. Why do I need, what's going on with this? Why is this? Why is this? Why is that? Because I didn't understand. The, immediately in my head, I started to get afraid when they said they had to even test for COVID. Well, were you reporting um, being sick and symptoms prior to them have asking you to test? Yes, I've told multiple officers... I didn't know what it was at first because it started with fatigue, with me feeling very fatigued. And I said, man, I don't know if it's just just me being tired or that's what I initially thought it was. Maybe I'm just a little exhausted. But I said, no, anybody knows their body. I said, something, it's, this got to be something more because I'm really, 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 I don't even have an appetite. Then when I'm trying to eat, I can't taste anything. It's probably a good thing that he can't taste anything. Because bullshit is spewing out of his mouth right now. That's what's it. Okay, now I need to put the uh, medical uh, sick call. When did call you report sleeping. these symptoms to the medical people or to even just a correctional officer? Um, a few days ago. A few days ago. Was, uh, over the weekend is when I started to notice the fatigue. So I, I was telling officers, man, I don't feel good. I don't know if it's just I'm tired. Usually, when did you... usually I don't. I don't just jump the gun and say something's wrong because it may just be, it could be anything. So when did you report the loss of taste? I reported the loss of taste last night. And was it after that, that they told you they wanted to test you? No, they didn't tell me till this morning that they wanted to test me. What other symptoms uh, are you reporting at this time? That was it so far, just the fatigue and the loss of taste. Which is the reason why I was told that I had to take the test. Which I was told at that time also that the earliest my results would be back would be Friday. And... You said at this point you're not willing to take a rapid test. Well, they said they said this is the test that they do. They, the nurse was very clear in what he was telling me when he told me how the test because I like I said there was a lieutenant and two officers right there while the whole thing was going on. I understand and, all of that. I have a very specific was, question to I you, sir. I was asking though. them questions, and he he specifically told me that 
this jail, this is the test that they do. They do not do rapid tests. I didn't even ask about the test because I know nothing about the test. This is what I was told. And after he told me that, I said, okay, fine, just do the test and I'll just sit on the protocol. Because at first when he told me, you know, you're going to have to be on a protocol where you're isolated. I said, okay, fine, just, just do the test. I'd rather you do the test and make sure that I'm healthy than to just refuse the test and just say, i just wait for it to see if I get better or something like that. So I said, yeah, just go ahead. And that's what I was informed. Friday would be the earliest that I would get the results back. And I would be placed on a protocol which is called isolation where I'm not allowed out of my cell. Anything else, sir, you think I need to know about this issue as I consider your request? No, at this time, I, I'm, I'm just telling you what I know. All right, so we have Daryl's version of events. This all amounts to basically uh, like the child in elementary school who goes to the nurse's office with a stomach ache and wants to go home from school. So let's jump ahead to Judge Darrow when she forces him to take the rapid test because she is a legend. Your Honor, I don't consent to being talked to in that fashion. Your lack of consent is noted for the record. Please find the piece of paper, open it up, and please read it. I will not consent to that, Your Honor. Or do I agree to that, Your Honor? I do not. <laughs> Tone. She's so over this. So, for context, the judge has made him take the rapid test, and she's now asking him to read the results. He's got it, like, right under his little folder there, and he's about to put up a little bitch fit. As if his consent is going to be a factor in her having these results read. Like, you've motioned for a stay. She's going to read the results. Your consent throughout this entire trial is not going to affect her decision-making process. Nice try, though, little boy. Mr. Brooks, then I'm going to advise the Sheriff's Department to find the piece of paper and hand it to me so that I can read it. So that those are your two options. I absolutely adore her for doing this, for strong arming like strong arming him like this. She's the big dog in this courtroom, little boy. Not you. Little gangster Daryl. Guess what? She runs this yard. Not you. And you're about to be put in your place by a very, very powerful woman. And he's gonna fucking hate it. It's awesome. The bailiffs are sitting there just like, give us the word, judge. Give us the word. <laughs> so sick. What would be the basis for that, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, this is an issue that you raised, and I need to bring it to finality and know what the test result is. Okay, with all due respect, it was uh, a motion that I raised. All right, um, I'm going to clear the courtroom. We're going to go off the record, and uh, we're going to find that piece of paper, and I'm going to address it when that's done. So apparently when the camera's cut out here, Daryl jumps on top of the table and puts his whole body, <laughs> he covers the papers with his body and the bailiffs actually have to rough him up, rough him up a little bit. We'll see him when we come back and he is broken. He is a broken man because a girl, a woman, has put him in his obedient, subservient place. So let's check that out quick. Um, I needed to make a record of what was being done, uh, including that I have obtained the test result, uh, so that there's an accurate record in this case uh, related to the motion that was raised previously by uh, Mr. Brooks. I want Mr. Brooks to know that I am not um, removing him from uh, when the jurors are brought back in. It was just simply because he was upset. Um, <laughs> Look at him. That's <laughs> so good. Oh, all of the frustrating and disgusting moments have all been worth it for this, this glorious face. <laughs> that is a broken man, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Reality is slowly pouring over him that he is in control of nothing. <laughs> His lies are not going to work. He cannot physically dominate this woman. He is a mere spoke in the wheels of justice, and those wheels have now run right through him. He was 
um, very loud when I walked into the courtroom before going on uh, back on the record. Um, he was uh, yelling about his constitutional rights being violated. Oh my God, what I would give for that footage! Um, I advised him that if there was any type of use of force that he wanted to complain about, he could certainly do that through the proper channels uh, with the sheriff's department. But just given his state of agitation and my need to make a record, um, I had him taken to the other courtroom. He is currently muted. I do not intend to go forward uh, with additional testimony. Ultimately, I'm going to take an early lunch break because of this. Um, but I will make a record of the following. I have the result. Um, I am going to scan it, have my clerk scan it. It will be filed as confidential, though. It won't be available to the public. Uh, but I, it's there for appellate purposes. But I can confirm that the test result for COVID-19 was negative. And there it is, folks. And a shock to absolutely no one. He is negative. I'd like to take this time to thank the Honorable Judge Jennifer Darrow for taking the results by force, the prosecution team of Opera Beasy and Wichow, and most importantly, the bailiffs, who manhandled today's contestant and tossed all 140 pounds of him back into the penalty box. Mr. Brooks will be rewarded with our runner-up prize of COVID protocol on today's episode of Fuck Around and Find Out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And again, I required uh, the sheriff's department to provide that result to me, um, and it was, and it will remain under seal. I realize I'm disclosing that result, but I feel obligated to do that given the motion that was raised two days ago by uh, Mr. Brooks. All right, well, that sure was fun. Let's jump ahead to yet another one of Brooks's many, many lies. Yep, okay. We'll make sure you have copies of the filings as well, so you know what will be discussed, or at least addressed in some fashion. But I need to provide copies to the state. Go ahead, sir. Um, I noticed that uh, one of the jurors, the lady in the black that's closest to the screen, and that corner chair over there. I recognize her from um, my initial appearance. Um, she flipped me off coming in to my initial appearance and coming out. With a lot of technical tests determined that was a lie. <laughs> I knew that already. I can smell the lies. I know it's her for a fact. I seen her about like how I'm looking at you right now. So I know for a fact that's her. I don't want that to end up being an issue. Is this some type of way that could be addressed? Absolutely it can, Mr. Brooks. Why don't we just go ahead and run the record back? No, sir. Can you an attorney Perry anything further? No, nothing else. All right, very good. We can be adjourned. Okay, so here we go. This is the lady who flips him off. If you haven't seen this original video, it's from This Family Does Everything. Mm -hmm. If you like my content. <laughs> nice. Flips the bird. <laughs> oh, she says run the record back, too. Yeah, uh, if you like my content, check out this film. It is everything. Her content is great, but we're going to see it again. <laughs> Legend! Okay, so this next clip is from the interrogation. He's going to make claims that his shoulder was injured when he was arrested. So we'll check that out. Now, oh my god, I just realized... That's a, is that a fully a fish? Oh, man, he really is a psychopath. His McDonald's order is a fillet of fish. <laughs> this man truly is sick. <laughs> All right, let's check this out. I'm not saying you're a demon. No, not you. Not, not, not your yeah. opinion, man. But it's just, it, I feel that way because you're trying to, trying to just, ah, I, I know you heard that. Oh my God. Uh, oh, I fucking heard it. Sure. I know you heard, heard that. that. I heard it. In check. We're going to go check with them. Maybe they'll listen to us a little bit better. Fuck. Yeah. Let's check. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, give us a minute. Ah. Uh, 
Let's see what we got. Dude, they, it gotta, how, how, it gotta be something wrong, man. How in the hell does it? Sometimes sprains will pop too. Yeah, yeah but why is it hurting like this and they say there's nothing? Dude. The sprains can actually be more painful than a break. Yeah. So whatever they got, whatever they did, it, it hurt so bad. Before the lie detector test determined, <laughs> that was a lie. Want to keep the food? Why don't you keep the food in the soda? And we'll be asking if you want. Ah. Ah. And immediately goes back to normal. <laughs> Starts fiddling with the paperwork. <laughs> this is glorious. I hate this guy. <laughs> yep. Just uh, check out the phone in here. Oh, word, I can make a fucking phone call quick. Let me just use this arm that I was just complaining doesn't work to pull up my chair. Yep, I'm going to use it to uh, move this phone over. Yep. And of course they're watching in the other room because of course they are. <laughs> they come running in. <laughs> yep, head back in hands. Oh, oh, it hurts so bad. Fucking <laughs> Daryl. Yeah. I think we got that title off. We'll be right with you. All right, so really quick, this is another video from This Family Does Everything. This is the arrest footage with an interview using, uh, regarding the use of force. Hi, Darrell. The audio's played over it. I'm here to talk to you real quick. Wanna just step in here for me? Uh, yes, yep. Hey, how you I'm all right, how you holding up? Uh, I was asking how you're holding up. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I found out everything. I was here for it and I cried for like an hour straight. I had to get a new mask. My heart dropped. Oh. When I found out what I did, what a loser. Oh, I am so sorry I'm to not, hear that. I'm not in good shape. I am so he sorry to know. hear that. Yeah, he did not get slammed. He well, got down on right his right own. Let me point because I know you got stuff going on today. Um, Do I? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, my God. So, um, I heard being arrested for that murder. <laughs> you had to go to the hospital, get checked out for some yes. injuries? Yes. Okay. So, um... And you said it was from the police. Yes. Rough me up. Okay. Yes. So he is um, such a drama queen. I don't know about this. What you're used to, but in Waukesha, we take that very seriously. That that claim very seriously. And I want to investigate and look into those officers that did that to you. Um, I don't. I don't think that that's right. If that's what happened, and and I want to be able it's to, not. to kind of go through and, and see what's going on with those cops and, and what might have happened. Even the detective said too when they came up, they was wondering why they had the knee all on my because the only arm that was free was this one okay and i kept yeah like them, another cop would I, I should like, talk to another officer like that in my back pocket i'm just gonna give you my id yeah. so you know who i am and when, why would he put his knee on you like that that's weird the guy was when he grabbed yeah, his right. arm he yanked me so hard i felt my shoulder pop oh. i actually heard it <laughs> pop oh and then he <laughs> slammed <laughs> boom my shoulder hit. This you were already on the ground. Hit. You didn't get then slammed. My knee was like my leg was kind of up. <laughs> He's like up this. in the air getting tossed. tossed. That's how I got all these scars. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. He's already got scars. And they had to um, X-ray his knee because this knee was this knee was scraped up. And <laughs> Right Nothing happened to him, and he's he needs surgery, he needs x rays and MRI. He laid down. This guy is such a liar. They my shoulder is definitely gonna need surgery. They did the x ray, and they, they will have to do an MRI to tell what's in there, but they can tell because it's a dent. It's actually a dent. I don't know if you can see it right here. That's their medical mm -hmm. diagnosis. That? A dented yeah, a shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yep. They say something in there is torn, but okay. they won't be able to know unless they did an MRI. And obviously, they didn't have time to do. Oh, yeah. They just didn't have time to give you the medical okay. care you needed. Well, some of the medical treatment is stuff that they, I mean, they're in ER and they can only do so much. And then yes, some of that stuff they, is going to have to be followed. Yeah. So, yeah, he's just clinging so, to that. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what to, they said. Um, kind of look into that a little further, but in order to substantiate, I hear what you're telling me with the injuries and I believe you. Um, I don't. But I have to have proof of that too, so I want to see if I can get the medical records from the hospital to show those injuries. 
that you've got. So what I have here, um, I can go through it with you quickly, is just an express consent for release of medical information. It's got your name, date of birth on here. <laughs> this is the same guy that would not sign a medical release for a COVID test. But when they need his medical information to investigate use of force, he cannot sign quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> Four is gonna catch fire. He's gonna sign that thing so fast. <laughs> oh, he's so see-through. It's pathetic. Your address. And just standard, I check all the boxes because we don't know exactly what they have. Oh, yeah, he's the checking all those boxes. Withhold stuff <laughs> he's from giving us him blood type. All the boxes to make sure. <laughs> he's so giving him DNA samples now. He gives me limited information. I gotta come back again. <laughs> Um, his so address, what he ate last Tuesday. Just to get all the necessary information that I need. He's finally consenting. And I need the signature right here for you. Yeah, he's going to sign it Daryl Brooks, um, too, and not the third-party interviewer. <laughs> this time, he's Daryl Brooks. Start looking into this a little more, okay? Okay, so if you're not familiar with this, this is the epic 50-minute rant. Hold your, <laughs> hold on to your seats, because this is a whirlwind of lies. I don't uh, consent to being called by the name that this court chooses to identify me by. Um, I want to state for the record that I'm here as a third party interviewer on special appearance on behalf of my client. No, the lie detector test determined that was a lie. You insane! No, 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 no! My name is Daryl Brooks Jr. Can that be noted for the record? It was noted this morning. May it be noted again for the record so that we can keep the record clear and accurate. The appearances are as they were this morning. They are no different. Bring the jury up. And we have yet to address subject matter jurisdiction, Your Honor. We still haven't, I still haven't been shown any verified proof that All rise. this court has subject matter jurisdiction. And at this point, may I request an affidavit that you, Your Honor, have no bias, no conflict of interest, and no interest in the outcome of this case? Mr. Brooks, the jury's coming out. We'll address your legal issues later, if I deem them appropriate. Judge, do you hold the full Mr. judicial Brooks, power please, of the state, or is please. this the military right, can power? Can you please take the jury out? Thank you. Do you hold the full Mr. Brooks, jurisdiction? Mr. just wait until the jury's out, please. I ask that you show that respect. I, I will. I will. Thank you. You all can be seated. Mr. Brooks, just make your statements. What do you want to advise the court today? I want to first say, state again for the record that I do not identify by that name, nor do I consent to being called that name. Uh, Your Honor, um, with all respect, uh, I'm merely asking you, do you have the full judicial power of the state or is this military power? I'm sorry? I don't understand what you're asking me, sir. I'm asking. <laughs> Look at him with those googly eyes. Even he's like, wait, wait, what, what was it again? Mil uh, what military or yeah, mil military power? Is now, this what legal basis? Are you I'm, making I'm, that request? I'm asking for the record. Is this a common law common common law court or an admiralty court? What 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 are we in here? And I'm I'm requesting an affidavit that you, Your Honor, have no bias, no conflict of interest, or no interest in the outcome of this case. Um, and the reason why I'm, I want to state this clearly for the record um, mainly is because of the bias that's been shown. Um, I have not been getting any. Uh, certified copies of any requests that I've made. <laughs> uh, 
That's why he's claiming she's biased. <laughs> she won't notarize his fucking documents. <laughs> God! Oh, classic! This guy is gold. Which I was told by this court to uh, address inmate communication forms for anything that I, that I may need. I've done that. I've complied with that. Every time I've needed something of the court pertaining to documents, I've done it the way the court has asked me. And I've always stated that I wanted everything to be certified. I have yet to even get that. My, um, my court docket sheet was not a certified copy. Um, when I asked your honor um, of your oath of office, I asked for that to be certified. You stated for the record that you would not give me a certified copy of your oath of office, which you are required to show if I ask for it. I've, I've brought up um, my Sixth Amendment constitutional right that has been pretty much discarded. And that is based on the fact that I have the right to face my accuser which would be the plaintiff state of Wisconsin in this matter. They have yet to show that a claim is, 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 I mean, a living human being can only make a claim. An entity cannot make a claim. I've requested uh, for the complaint to be provided. The complaint from November 23 of 2021, the amended complaint from November 29th of 2021, the second amended complaint from January 12 of, of this year, 2022. I have yet to see those. Um, there was no record of a bond in my docket sheet. I'm asking that I ask for that to be verified by proof. That hasn't been provided. There's so many um, biases, clear biases in, 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 in questions that are not being asked based on judicial determinations made by your honor. Um, you look at the discrepancies and, and I think they're clear um, I think at minimum I deserve for the subject matter jurisdiction to be verified and proven I've raised that issue numerous times pretty much every day every time I, I, I come before your court your honor I, I address that and it has yet to be proven um, my filings have been disregarded, even though they've been filed into the record, even though they've been time stamped. Oh, Daryl, he wants the oath of offices, the board certifications, resumes, their credit card info, social security numbers, all stamped and time and, and time stamped and certified and notarized. He wants everything on the record. But the second they give him <laughs> anything to fill out, he just tosses it off the desk. <laughs> what an asshole. I haven't got the original copies of, of any of them, which I'm supposed to get. Um, and as we sit here today, I, I, I'm still not even understanding the nature and cause of the of the charges that hasn't even been proven can that be provided in any way I'm, I'm i'm basically sitting here confused because i don't understand why these proceedings are are allowed to continue when there's so many things that have not been provided they haven't been provided in my discovery they haven't been provided to me by uh being brought to my uh pie where i'm housed in the jail I'm without so much information, valid information to this matter. And, and I believe that it should be verified and it should be proven for the record. And if not, I move for this case to be dismissed for failure to appear by the plaintiff and failure to state a claim for which relief can be granted. Everything that I'm saying it has merit and it has validity. As we see here today, I'm still... Uh, being charged with charges that shouldn't even exist based on the testimony that we've heard for the last few days. There's so many things left to still be proven. The, the prosecution team hasn't even proven that they're licensed to practice law in Wisconsin. Are, they haven't proven are they just bar association uh, uh, members or do they have 
state-issued licenses. He's the only one without a law license, but he needs theirs proven. <laughs> that has not been proven, which I've raised that issue for the record. I'm not even sure if that was even recorded in the docket sheet. There's so many things, and, and Your Honor, you still haven't stated for the record if you have full judicial power of the state or is this military power that hasn't been proven nothing is nothing has been proven not subject matter jurisdiction not licenses to practice law my sixth amendment right has been basically trampled over no complaints have have been sh shown neither of the three that i've requested by the way that you told me to request them by inmate communication um nothing is certified that i that i get copies of when i clearly ask for them to be certified and to be filed into the record uh, it's it's to the point where i your honor you should you should rec recuse yourself from the from the pre uh, presiding wow that crosses a line that was really fucking disrespectful she should have held him in contempt for this this is fucked up what a dick at this point if you're not going to um abide by the oath that you swore which was in your oath correct you swore to protect the constitution of the united states you swear to protect we the people. That is not being done here. If every valid argument that I raised is, is, is taken by the court as a sign of disrespect or a sign of trying to intentionally be disruptive or, or uh, causing a problem when I'm merely seeking understanding because I don't understand. I'm merely seeking to understand. He tries to play this card the entire fucking trial. You can't just claim you don't understand and get off from murder charges, you fucking doofus. <laughs> and you're supposed to be held to the same standard as any other attorney. Claiming you don't understand is not a defense for any of this, to quote fucking Daro herself. She should have stuck to that more. Just like, you don't understand? That's cool, moving on. And I'm merely seeking to understand why this information has yet to be provided and we're this far into this matter. And there's still no verified proof. Even as I'm sitting out saying this, there's still no proof being provided. N zero. How is this case allowed to continue without these uh, documents and filings being verified? Their credibility is not the one on fucking question here, man. <laughs> there's only one person in this room without a law license. Can you guess who it is, Daryl? Is there any legal factual basis that that can state why this information has, has not been provided? Why the docket sheet is incorrect? Why there's so much on the docket sheet that should be on record that's not even in there? That if we had the the uh, the recordings of the record, they would see was brought up numerous times that that doesn't even show up. I'm just I'm just asking for your honor to be fair, which is another right that I have, the right to a fair trial and the right to an impartial jury. It's I can go on and on and on about oh, we know <laughs> about what's not what's not being done. I have again, I, I, I say I have the right to face my accuser. Where's where's the injured party? Who's who's making the claim? I asked your honor numerous times for your honor's name you wouldn't answer i asked did you have a claim against me you did not answer i asked the whole courtroom did anyone have a claim against me no one said anything which you stated for the record a non-responsive answer a non-responsive answer is is an agreement which would be a tactic agreement by you your honor that you don't have to answer these questions that you should be answering. I have that right. The, the plaintiff in this matter, which was stated 
by witnesses in testimony to be the state of Wisconsin. But when I ask, do they see the state of Wisconsin present in the courtroom? The question is shut down, which is a valid question. The plaintiff should be present in this matter. Where is the plaintiff? They're in the ground, man. You killed them. You want us to fucking dig up their bodies and bring them into the courtroom? What the fuck are you saying right now? Who's bringing the Who's bringing the claim? Because we know an entity can't bring a claim. It has to be a living, br breathing human being. No one is stated for the record if they're the injured party. Not your honor, not the prosecutors, not anyone in the court has stated to be an injured party in this matter. No one. Not one person. I have the right to demand that the court place in the evidence any unrevealed contract. Has that been provided to me? Have that been placed in the evidence? I would like to see it, which is my right. I have the right to inform the jury about the truth in their duty, in their rights. That's the First Amendment and the Sixth Amendment. But I'm repeatedly told to shut the question down when this is valuable information that the jury should be privileged to know. They deserve to know. Once they were chosen to sit on this jury why are we keeping information away from them that they deserve to know they ultimately have the power they decide the matter why are we keeping information valuable information from their knowledge because if they knew all the women you beat all the times you jump bail all the family members you shot at they might make snap decisions about your character without hearing the case. But you'd go on to make damn sure they hate you regardless. So fucking congratulations there, dumbass. That's, that's a disservice to the jury. And frankly, it's a dis disservice to the court that they're not allowed to hear things that they should know, that they should be informed of. It's our right. To inform them of everything that they have the power to know, to do and to know. They deserve that much. It would, it would be, it would be a travesty for them to make a decision without being fully informed. And these are all valid, valid things. I have the right to protest and object if any of my rights or demands are not being met. I've done that numerous times only to be shut down. Numerous times. I've raised uh, the, the issues that I didn't consent to anything that may have been suggested on behalf of my former attorneys. I've never even consented to them making a plea on my behalf. I haven't, as a matter of fact, when it comes to a plea, I haven't even had the, the opportunity to entertain any plea that may have been suggested by the prosecution. Oh, the lie detector test determined that was a lie. Oh, is that really? We haven't even we haven't even talked about that. Not one time was it ever brought to my attention that the prosecution even wanted to offer a plea. That's another issue. I have the right to challenge the jurisdiction of this court, which I've done numerous times. I have the right to demand that the code be construed in harmony with the common law. I just raised that. I'm constantly referred to as pro se when I've raised the issue that I'm pro per. I have the right to conduct my defense pro per free from professional restrictions imposed upon licensed attorneys, which this court is well aware that I am not a licensed attorney. In fact, the court is also aware that I only had three days to prepare for a trial that the prosecution has been, been prepared for for a whole year. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. Yeah. We see these boxes right here. This box alone is 45 or 50 pounds full of 
so much information I, 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 I haven't even gone through half of it. It was stated for the record that the discovery the in its entirety was brought to my housing unit on the 29th of September. Which trial was scheduled, that would be a Thursday, which trial was scheduled for Monday. How can I possibly go through all that? All the paperwork, all the the uh, digital discovery and, 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 and things of that nature. How can I go through all of that and be prepared in three days? That's a clear bias. I did not have time to prepare for this. Everything I'm doing is off the top of my head, winging it, taking it as it comes. When the court is well aware that I was not prepared. Would you look at that? Old Daryl finally stumbled upon some truth. We are all we are all well aware of the fact that you are unprepared, sir. That was very apparent. Day one. <laughs> I raised the issue that it should be an adjournment, at least at the minimum it should be an adjournment because of that fact. At least to let me go through all the discovery. That was denied. No valid reason was stated for that when your honor knew there is no possible way, humanly possible, that I could be ready for a trial of this magnitude in three days. That's clear bias. I have the right to face the injured party claiming damages. That's under Article 3 and the Sixth Amendment. I raised that issue again. Where's the injured party? Is the injured party present in, in, in court right now? Can anyone can anyone make a claim against me? Can you make a claim against me, Your Honor? Do you know of anyone that can make a claim against me, Your Honor? Can anyone right now in court, anyone, make a claim against me? Um, yes, I hereby file a claim against Daryl Brooks to the tune of one million dollars. For wasting everybody's time with this non-stop waterfall of absolute bullshit. And because of that, your honor, the motion to dismiss should be granted. Based on that alone, there's, there's no injured party in this matter. So who makes the claim? Who? I have the right to put the judge on notice of my intent to appeal in any ruling decisions during the case. You stated for the record that I will have to wait until appealing process, but it, my right is that I can raise that issue during the case, which I've attempted to do. That's been shut down. I have the right to specifically reserve all of my rights, which I do at the beginning. I have the right to say what I want and to be heard under the First Amendment. And when I attempt to do that, it's taken as a slight to the court, a disrespect to the court, or me intentionally coming into the court to be disrespectful, which I've stated that that is not my intention. Never, never is it my intention. I never intend to walk into your courtroom, Your Honor, and be disrespectful intentionally. I never come into this courtroom to disrespect anyone. But because I don't understand, I raise these issues because they have validity. I have the right to object to any statement made by the judge or the prosecution. I've done that and been repeatedly shut down. Without a, without a, uh, without a lawful explanation. I've, I've repeatedly asked the court for a, a, a motion for a finding of fact to determine if things are being done legally. I've been denied that numerous times without merit. Which is also my right. I have the right to recuse the judge. At 
any time, which is also a right. I have the right to a speedy and fair trial by impartial jury. I think it's safe to say that my speedy trial right has definitely been violated because this matter has been taking place for roughly a year. I've never consented to waiving anything related to a speedy trial. How can I possibly go through all that? All the paperwork, all the the uh, digital discovery and, 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 and things of that nature. How can I go through all of that and be prepared in three days? And if that was done, it was done without my consent or without my knowledge. We're way past the speedy trial date. Way past. When the uh, change of venue motion was was brought up. I believe that was the first time I came before your honor in, in early March. I, I want to say March 11th of this year when uh, the uh, change of venue motion came into play. It was decided by your honor that that wouldn't be decided until uh, the 20th of June, I believe. That's that's over the 90 day mark right there for a speedy trial. That was denied and, and I, I, I still don't understand how that was denied when it's, when it's clearly obvious that at minimum the venue should have been changed based on the fact of the magnitude of the matter. There's no possible way anyone in this county would not have some type of connection or some type of knowledge, whether they were um, told something by someone that they may know, uh, the news reporting alone, just that alone, there's no way that this trial should be taking place in Waukesha County. He's actually got a legitimate defense here. If you could craft a well-articulated and well-founded argument to change the venue because of biased news reporting, he probably could at least get the judge to consider a venue change. I don't think she'd do an adjournment at this point because they're in the trial. But because this point is sandwiched in between all of the other non utter nonsense, <laughs> it's just you know, lumped in with all these other ridiculous claims. God, he's so stupid. <laughs> that, that's obvious. That's obvious from the way the motion was presented, the coverage alone, the, the political campaign ads that plastered the defendant's face all over the TV every single day. Every time a political uh, campaign was brought up, it made reference to to this incident every single time the fact that uh people have children that go to the same schools in this county that people may have worked with the same people in this county you yourself your honor uh, uh, stated that you at one time worked with the father of one of the people that that was injured in this matter that is a clear conflict conflict of interest right there you also stated for the record that not only did you work uh, with, with this father, but that uh, at one time they may have donated to uh, your, I don't know if it was to you becoming a judge or uh, I, I would have to look through the docket, but you said it on the record that they donated money to uh, a, a cause of yours. You also stated that when you had gained knowledge of the incident, and that their family member was injured in an incident that you reached out via phone. I don't recall if it was text message or an actual phone conversation, but you put that on the record. You also stated that the nature of your relationship was strictly professional. I don't know about you, Your Honor, but 
I've I've worked numerous jobs and I know what professional relationships is and personal relationships. I've never had the cell phone number of anyone that was a, a personal relationship saved to my phone that I could reach out immediately when I learned something. I don't think you do know the difference between a personal and a professional relationship because I've I've had several jobs. I've been working since 2006. And I've always had my bosses and coworkers' phone numbers. If you're going to be late, if you're going to call out sick, you're at the store, you want to ask if anybody wants anything, it's, it's basically a necessity to have your coworkers' phone numbers. I literally cannot tell if he's just BSing, like when he asks a judge, who, who signs a letter? Everybody signs a letter, you fucking weirdo. Like, is he just that unfamiliar with societal norms that he doesn't understand it's commonplace? I mean, who would give Daryl Brooks their phone number? Fair enough. But still, how can you be so disconnected from reality and societal normalities that he doesn't get it's commonplace to give your coworkers your phone number? Again, I can't tell if he's just BSing her or if he literally is just ignorant to the way society works. <sighs> Who knows with Daryl? He's a fucking... He's a unique one, that's for sure. He's a rare egg. Um, I think we're gonna have to call it here, guys. Unfortunately, we're getting past the uh, one hour mark. My laptop has trouble rendering and uploading videos when they get this long. So, um, I promise we take a look at some of my favorite comments. So, let's just take a minute and check out some of them, shall we? Nasan writes... Watching this guy is definitely like an emotional roller coaster for the viewer. You go from amused to outraged, just feeling bad for him. Very true. Uh, I've stated in other videos that I just, uh, sometimes I find him funny. Other times I get really frustrated and sometimes it just gets so dark I have to turn it off. Z-Force commented, I never hit feeling bad for him because he is too much of a menace. But the rest is true and then CC comments me either. Yeah, um, agreed. Just, uh, like I said, sometimes he's funny, sometimes he's pathetic, and most of the time he's just kind of gross. If you guys don't know Nasan, um, him and I did a video together on Mark Jensen. He's the antifreeze killer. You should check that out. It's pretty funny. But, um, he's a really great guy, too. If you guys enjoy uh, video game content, he does some playthroughs, and, um, he's a great YouTube creator. I really, uh, encourage you guys to check out his channel, okay? I'll leave a link in the description for him. Deja Poo writes, Great commentary and accurate. Every time anyone mentioned Erica or his mom, he would be to most obnoxious and triggered. I think he means would be the most obnoxious and triggered. And very true. Um, he clearly is very controlling of women and um, is sensitive to when he's sensing that control is slipping. That's when we've seen him be the most explosive in his anger. Um, that's pretty typical for a controlling personality or, or uh, you know, abusive partners. We see that very typically um, when they feel like uh, they're no longer in control is when their fury hits its peak. Um, you can see here, I just commented to on his username. I had to share this because it's just so funny to me. Deja Poo. <laughs> uh, he wins award for best, com best username of the week. So uh, your award will be in the mail. Lin Lin writes... I enjoy your longer vids. I love your commentary. Too bad you're abandoning longer vids. Looking forward to part two of this. Thank you. Uh, that dropped. I'm not sure if she commented. If she did, I probably responded to it. Um, as you can see, I respond to all these. I try to um, answer everybody's comments. There have been a lot of them, but I do the best I can. Um, when I'm Usually when I'm working on the video during the weekends, I might not get to it, but I do the best I can to reply to everybody. And just to uh, reach out to Lim Lim directly, you're so nice. I saw your other comment. You're very com um, complimentary. All you guys are just, you guys are all so nice. And I, I just want to take a minute and just let you know that, you know, all of your nice comments really warms my heart. I just, uh, I lived very alone before I started making this YouTube. I, I had some personal stuff going on. Um, I don't want to get too much into my past, but uh, I am in recovery. And this has just been such a great outlet to express myself and reach out and talk to you guys and it's just filled my soul so much and I, I just uh, 
all of you who take the time to say nice things or even just give me feedback, it's just thank you. Thank you so much. Pale Rider writes, I'm very happy that I found your channel. Love your hilarious commentary. Please keep up the great work you're doing. This guy, DB, will give you up to years of great content. <laughs> very true. Daryl is just a uh, content generating machine. <laughs> Say what you want about the guy making fun of them does numbers. But uh, yeah, just to echo my just uh, previous sentiments, um, you know the the nice words mean so much, and I'm glad I'm glad you guys find this stuff funny. Um, I really work hard to write scripts. I try not to get too much into the like psychology and breaking down what he's doing uh, too much because some people have said that they don't like the longer breaks with the talking. So I try to keep it more humor based. I find it's easier to get through making the videos that way when I'm kind of clowning on him as opposed to trying to get inside his head that kind of takes me to a dark place when I'm trying to understand why somebody like Daryl Brooks does what he does I mean it's just uh can't get a good read on a psychopath oh uh, real quick too pale rider I don't know if that name is based on this but it reminds me of that song by the serial killer if you haven't heard it look up a uh, mystery rider on YouTube it's it's actually a pretty decent song but it was a tape they found in his homeless camp he's the I forget his name now, but he was down in Florida. He's like the sorority killer. He was the basis for those scream, yeah, scream movies. The song is really dark, but it's <laughs> really good. There's actually some pretty good covers on it. But yeah, I'm not sure if that was the basis for your name, but that's what it reminds me of. So, on to the next one. GG Ravel writes, "It's derelevant." <laughs> that's awesome. Nice. You guys in the comments just kill me. Delia Fergara writes. Oh my god, I get some say to shorten your videos that they are too long. My opinion, I suggest keep the length, but shorten the commentary. You show maybe 10 seconds of footage, pause. You talk way too much in between. You and DB have that in common. Gosh, I'm sorry, out. Sorry I tried, couldn't do it too much. Uh, yeah, sorry you feel that way, Delia. I did, uh, try to work on that in my newest uploads. I try to pause less and just make the uh, the commentary in, in briefer segments. I know in my previous videos I did kind of ramble on, and you're right, uh, <laughs> Daryl and I do have that in common. But, um, yeah, I hope you give some of my other videos a try. Um, thank you for the feedback. Um, I will work on that moving on in the future, okay? Thanks again. All right, bye. Darla Cummings writes, 2 a.m. and I'm laying in bed cackling at your voices for the state of Wisconsin part. <laughs> I think he's... Uh, I think he's here. Here, let me see. Hey! Hey, Wisconsin! Yo! Yeah. Can you come in here for a sec? Is you okay? <laughs> Guys, quiet down! That's my dog's barking. Yes, Wisconsin is coming in. Chill. What, what is it? What can I do for you? Oh, uh, looks like Darla here is a big fan of yours. Oh, hello, Darla. <laughs> yes, you're laying in bed at 2 a.m. Next time you can invite state of Wisconsin. I can promise you we will not rush to judgment. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Go back in your hole now. Okay, bye-bye. Monica Ortiz writes, I'm a new subscriber and I very much enjoy your videos. Danke, Shane, and greetings from a German living in California. Oh, thank you, Monica. Welcome, our group... <laughs> If you're a subscriber, you're a squirrel pup. So, welcome to the squirrel pups. You're all my babies. And, uh, <laughs> welcome. You're officially indoctrinated. Um, for some reason, I think I have a German audience. Because I had a couple other people say that they were viewers from Germany. And that's wild. If anybody is watching this from, like, a foreign country or you have a back a heritage somewhere... Let me know in the comments, because I find that extremely fascinating. Like, how do you guys find this stuff? Like, what brings you to American culture? It's just cool. Very cool, though. All right, that's going to do it. Um, thank you guys again for watching. Like, comment, all that stuff. Um, it, it definitely helps the channel grow. Um, if you guys could do me a favor and just share these videos with anybody you think might find them funny. If not, whatever. You know, that's obviously your prerogative, but... Thank you so much for watching all this way through. We're at the end now, and I, I couldn't say thank you enough. So, 
and we'll see you in the next one. Leave comments, and I'll, I'll do this uh, in my next long upload. I'll do the same thing. We'll take a look at some comments at the end of the video, okay? All right, guys. Love y'all. Bye.